Hi everybody, my name is Chef Ian Vare, here to you today at the studios of Peg TV, right here in Rutland, Vermont. We love it here in Rutland, the Green Mountain State of Vermont. So today, you're joining me for a delicious meal. I've decided to call it Dinner on Fire. Why is that? Well, I brought home some product from the store the other day, a few things from the farmer's market, and I needed dinner quickly. But I needed something really, really delicious. It was a hot date that I was having. So, <laughs> don't laugh. So, um, I got some really nice potatoes together. Uh, I was at the farmer's market and I grabbed some green beans and some string beans, picked up some garlic. Uh, I grabbed a couple pork chops. So, uh, you know, nice little seared pork chop with wild mushrooms and some uh, sauteed uh, green and wax beans and garlic and rosemary encrusted potatoes. Sounds good. All right, so let's dive in. All right, so where do we start? We always start with what takes the longest. So let's think about this. Probably our potato, all right? It's the most fibrous, the most dense. So let's start there. I've got some nice red skin potatoes and what we're gonna do is we're only going to half them. Okay, no big deal, no big quartering or dicing or, and I'm only going to do about 10 to 12 ounces, I would say. I'm not going to feed an army, it's just a couple of us. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, these potatoes are going to go into a mixing bowl. And with them, I have some fresh garlic. And I think with these, I'm only going to need a large clove, maybe two smaller cloves at the most. And with the garlic, you're just going to kind of peel off that clove. And then, honestly, the best thing to do is to just push down on that. All right? You just push down on that, and it smushes it a bit. OK. And this peel, honestly, comes right off. OK. Pretty clean. All right, the garlic. Now remember folks, when we're using this knife and we're cutting the way I do, I might make it look easy, but really, really simply keep your knuckles turned, your, your, your fingers like totally sideways like this and keep that thumb back, all right? It, what it is is a guide for your knife and you can just pivot right along your product, okay? And then come back across. All right, fresh garlic. Okay, 30 seconds later, we have chopped garlic. Let's put this aside. Now I have some nice fresh rosemary and it looks like I'm gonna take about two sprigs of rosemary here and just peel this right off of the stem. Okay, one more time. Dinner on fire. If anyone's just tuning in, they're like, what's this guy making now? I'm making dinner really fast. Some garlic and rosemary roasted potatoes are what we're working on right now. We're about to sear some pork chops. And then we'll have some lovely sauteed garlic green beans. Oh, did I mention I might be making a sauce if there's time in this? It's a pretty fast sauce. So those of you watching might really like this. Okay, now I have a little olive oil for this guy. Half of a tablespoon maybe. I like to put my garlic in first and get that mixed around. And then we'll go with the rosemary. All right, we're just gonna toss this all around folks. Okay, next I need just a little bit of black pepper. Just a little bit of sea salt. Yummy. Okay. So, this one goes into the oven. Generally what I do is I just dump them right in the pan, folks. Some of that garlic's gonna find its way on the bottom of the pan. It's not the end of the world. 
Okay, we have a little more in the bowl that we mixed with, and I, this along with the oil and rosemary and spices, I just kind of scoop out onto what's here in my pan. Okay. And in the oven. I have the oven set for 400 degrees. That's going to take, honestly, because they're fairly small potatoes, 40 minutes. Okay? So really, at home, this meal is about 40 minutes start to finish. Now, I cheated a little bit. I, I did some of these potatoes about 10 minutes ago, so they're already in the oven. So we're going to be done right on time. Okay? So don't, don't get mad. I, I get to cheat a little bit because I'm on television here. <laughs> So potatoes are in. All right, what's next? I have a lovely bone-in pork chop. Now, you can use any type of meat with this recipe that I'm making, okay? If you want to use a filet tenderloin, you can. I wouldn't. Um, but uh, I would probably use like a chicken breast. Uh, or maybe like uh, a bone in thigh or drumstick or something like that. But at any rate, this is uh, still a very, very nice, flavorful cut of meat. And this spice that we're doing for it, I'm literally making right on the air, okay? So I'm going to give it a little bit of chili powder. Let's see, let's do it right here. A little chili powder, a little garlic powder. A little black pepper, not too much. Again, sea salt. You can use kosher salt. You could use iodized if you like. You could use Himalayan pink salt. A little ginger. This is a secret ingredient I like to sneak into some of my recipes. A little ginger, a little spiciness. And this is one you might not find at home. This is an umami powder from a wild mushroom called a sweet tooth mushroom. These guys come out in July, August, maybe even into September. I have a few right now that I could work with. Okay, now I'm gonna mix all this spice up. Yummy. Just a little bit of oil on top, just a little bit. Okay, let's give it a nice rub. Really, really nice rub. Yummy. Okay, this dinner is on fire, folks. I'm telling you. Potatoes are working in the oven. We've got a bone in. Seasoned and shortly to be seared pork chop. That looks delicious. Make sure you get really nice coverage on here, okay? Don't be afraid to slather this on. I didn't go very heavy on the salt. Mostly it's spices, and don't forget you've got that wild mushroom umami powder, which I personally cook with all the time. It's fabulous. I happen to know a few people who, who sell it at the farmer's market. Okay, looks good. We have a nice hot pan. Normally I'm one to use, I'd really like to use avocado oil, to be honest, for sauteing, but I forgot my oil today and I have olive oil to work with, which usually, folks, olive oil is best left cold, okay? Uh, it can be cooked with, not a problem at all. Uh, it's smoke temp, it's heating temp isn't quite as high, okay? So this is something that it's not the end of the world. I, I, and I was thinking about it today. I said, you know what, just go with it like you would at home. So let's go in this nice hot pan. We're gonna sear that. We've got a hood that we're gonna put on. Make sure you wash your hands. Folks, we're not trying to cook this pork chop all the way through, start to finish. We're going to sear this. We're going to give it some flavor on each side, and then I'm going to be finishing it in the oven. We're only going to have about 15 minutes-ish to finish it in the oven. Oven's a nice 400 degrees. Potatoes are working nicely. Very, very nice. Beautiful. We want color. We want caramelization. Okay? 
as a chef, that color and that caramelization is what brings you flavor. And be careful also, because things like spices, like garlic, can uh, make your house stink up. <laughs> Peg TV, it won't be too bad, I promise. Right. So, don't forget everyone, Vermont Farmers Market, Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. They're in Depot Park, which is in the big sort of parking lot, kind of uh, shopping center out front of uh, the Price Chopper and Walmart and all that area right in downtown Rutland. Uh, show up. There's a lot of vendors there. There's a lot of local products that are wonderful. Uh, there are farmers where you can get produce like I have today. Um, there are all kinds of crafters and artisans. Um, many different people that are part of our local community right there at the farmer's market. They also have one on Wednesdays. I was there yesterday, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. It's not as large, but if you're in need of some good fresh local veggies, that's your place to go. So the uh, Vermont Farmer's Market, Wednesdays 1 to 5, Saturdays 9 to 2. Don't forget to see us. I think uh, I might be there. Maybe you'll bump into me. <laughs> okay, so we've got a nice seared chop. I'm going to finish this in the oven. Remember, our oven's at 400 degrees. Yummy. Okay. Now, a quick to glaze. Back on the heat. All right. Now, I have a few uh, of these green beans and wax beans that I have been working with, and I'm just going to show you now. Let's see if we can see these in my hand, okay? The green beans and the wax beans are, are yellow green beans. Um, they're delicious. These are very local. These were fresh picked uh, just a few days ago, I believed. And, um, and all I'm going to do is just take the top off of this fella here. And I want about equal portions. So a few of them, and then a few more, and then a few more. Works pretty well. And what I'm going to be doing is just very lightly blanching them in, in some boiling water. You could lightly steam them. And then I'm going to saute them. You could saute them all the way through. I'm kind of a fan of getting my product just about as, as cooked as, uh, as I like it and then finishing it off. That seems to work pretty well. Okay. All right, almost, almost. Okay, we have boiling water, that's what I want. So these beans are gonna go in for just a couple minutes, okay? Just a few minutes here. Dinner on fire, what is that? That is a meal that you've come home, you only have a few groceries, you need dinner fast, you need a nice meal, you come in and you throw it together. So that's what we're doing today. Hi everybody, my name's Chef Ian Vare. I live in Rutland, Vermont. I participate at the Vermont Farmers Market and the Rutland County Farmers Market. And uh, I make a little show here called uh, Green Mountain Chef at Peg TV. And it's a lot of fun. I come in here about once a month and sometimes I will bring in some products from the wild because I'm a wild mushroom forager. I have a little wild mushroom business. Um, frequently I bring in products from the Vermont Farmers Market because I am a participant of the, the Farmers Market. And um, I like to chat a little bit. So, you know, there was a time when I was a chef instructor. There was a time when I was an executive chef. It's a lot of fun taking knowledge that I've gained through the years and bringing it onto the television spreading it out into our uh, community. So that's what brings me here. Chef Ian Vare. Dinner on fire. Almost. Let's check in the oven. Looking good. If ever anyone sees one of these shows and you have any questions about it, 
feel free to come on a Saturday to the Vermont Farmer's Market. Uh, I'm there 9 to 2. If you ever have any questions about a recipe or a mushroom that I used, feel free to stop on down. One of the mushrooms that I have today, it's actually ground up and dried. It's called a sweet tooth mushroom. And anyone who's a, a mushroom forager, an avid mushroom forager, might know uh, what that is. But they're, uh, they're delicious. They're kind of cream colored. They have li li little like spikes on, on, on the bottom of them rather than gills. They have teeth. And um, they're lovely to eat. Uh, this batch I happen to dry up and grind up. And I like to use for seasonings and to top casseroles and to add into soups for flavoring. Uh, it's a really, really nice sort of extra sharp flavor onto the palate. When, uh, when you eat these dried umami, is what they're called, uh, mushrooms. Really big over in the Orient. And a lot of their practices with mushrooms are moving over you know, to Western countries. And it makes me happy, because as a chef, it's a lot of food that is uh, really, really fabulous. All right, so these beans have cooked long enough, about three minutes. I have chef hands, but it's still good to use oven mitts. Okay, I have a nice hot pan. Put some oil in there. Turn my pan down lower. It's pretty hot. I'm going to go in with some, uh, some hot product. Reminds me of my days as a saute cook, one of the most difficult stations working in a kitchen was on saute. And the key to saute is a hot pan. So you really, really need a hot pan and just a little bit of oil. That's all you need. And when you put your product in, it should give you a it should sizzle on you. Um, that's nice. That means you're going for, uh, you're going to get some good caramelization in there. So while these are browning just a little bit, I'm gonna, let's add some garlic to this. The heck, I'll do a couple cloves. So again, I've got the garlic cloves. They just peel right off. Push down on them. Push down. And for the most part, these guys peel right off. Oh, almost, almost. Good. Very good. All right, I'm not going to chop these up quite as much. I'm just going to give them a little slice, real, real thin slice. Maybe go one time across. Leave them a little larger than they were on the potatoes. Yeah, just a little bit across. That's fine. All right, so these are still going. That's good. All right, meanwhile, I do have time for a sauce, everyone. This will be a fun sauce. OK. This is something a lot of us have at home, especially here in Vermont. Um, but we're going to start off with some soy sauce, just standard soy sauce. Half a cup of soy sauce. Quarter of a cup of sweetener. I used maple. And I'm going to add a little bit of ginger. Okay. Now, I want this to come to a boil before anything else. And what I'm going to do to thicken it is use a little bit of cold water. It's kind of fun. 
I learned this years ago uh, from uh, a chef who taught me all kinds of cool sauces on the fly. Boom. And uh, he taught me using cornstarch. Now in culinary school, in most French chefs, we use roux, which is 50-50, half and half, flour uh, and butter or, or a fat. This is different, the cornstarch slurry. I'm actually going to add in just a little bit of cornstarch into cold water. Not much, folks. I, I might have put in a half of a tablespoon to a quarter cup of water, may, maybe. Okay. Maybe just a little bit more. All right. We don't want it to be like thick in there. We want it to be nice and and uh, have very little vi viscosity. Okay. Not too thick. All right. No lumps. Yummy. That looks good. Okay. So our sauce is boiling. That didn't take any time. We're going to add in just a few drops of the cornstarch slurry. While mixing it, we want it to come back to a boil. My heat's on high, looking good. All right, how thick did we get? A little more thick, I don't know. That's pretty good. Okay. The chef is gonna add in a little bit more maple. See how we did, everybody. With this recipe, if you add a little too much cornstarch slurry, add a little more water. Yum. It's finished. That's all. Literally. I don't see if I have a spoon or anything. Here we go. Look at this, folks. It literally holds on to the back of the spoon. It's called nappe. It means to coat the back of a spoon. Very, very cool. How easy was that? All right, back to these green beans. I want just a little bit more oil in the pan for my garlic. I'm shutting my heat off. My beans are cooked and happy. I just want to barely brown my garlic. Yummy. All right, that looks good. A little bit of salt and pepper, not too much. We have our sauce that has some saltiness in it. Okay. All right, that is dinner on fire. The clock right now says about 23 minutes and everything's almost ready. Now remember, I put my potatoes in the oven first. So that was a little, that was a little secret there, okay? just about time to plate up though. So we have our pork chops that we've seasoned and seared with all kinds of different uh, spices like garlic powder and onion powder and salt and pepper and ginger and we added a little bit of mushroom, wild mushroom umami. We took some uh, red skin potatoes and halved them and we turned them into garlic and rosemary roasted potatoes. Both of them are in the oven and just about to come out. And then we jumped over to these green beans, and we've got some lovely green beans from the farmer's market, the, the uh, yellow wax beans and the green beans, okay? And I blanched them quick, and they're, they've just sauteed up with garlic in my saute pan here. And I'm about to finish everything with some sauce that I made with a cornstarch slurry. And I thickened up a little bit of soy sauce and some maple syrup and a little bit of ginger. So we've got a hint of Asian flair. We've got a hint of flair from the wild and uh, a nice, good, home-cooked meal with local uh, ingredients on the fly. All right, so let's plate this up. We'll see how we did. I don't know. Woo! These look good. Okay, I want to put my beans down first. Yum, 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 give me some. I'll tell you, it's fun to be a chef and to make up recipes and 
to share things with people that you've made and it's really uh, it's a lot of fun for a career, it's a lot of fun at home, it's a lot of fun to share. Here we are everybody, take a look at this. I've got some sauce that I'm going to go over top and this is that maple and soy sauce thickened with a slurry and this is just going to just, just go over just around a little bit, nothing too major. Alright, so here it is, our finished product. We have our seared pork chop on top of our uh, sauteed garlic green beans and our roasted garlic and rosemary potatoes and we made a little bit of a, a maple and soy glaze for the top of it and uh, many of these are local ingredients. My name is Chef Ian Vare, you're watching PEG TV. Thank you so much everyone for joining us and please join me again. I, I have a new one of these about every month and um, continue on. I'll always be bringing in local food, uh, a, coupled with a little bit of wild food and some passionate flair. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.